All right, so up next for the Yas Marina, charge pipes, J pipe two. So charge pipes aren't necessarily the sexiest upgrade out there, but some of them can look good. And uh, if your car is tuned, then you don't run the risk of the stock plastic ones cracking under the higher boost. Now I know in the last video I said that chrome had no place on this car. Any mod that can get rid of just a sliver of chrome is a mod worth doing. And that's not to say that chrome doesn't have its place on cars because it absolutely does. Just not this one. What I should have said was that it had no place on the outside of the car. I think it can look great in the engine bay and I love it on old muscle cars. That being said, I'm cautiously optimistic about how these are gonna turn out. I'm not 100%, but I think they're gonna be great. There were a few other brands that I considered, one of them being even sure. But three reasons I didn't go with them. So for one, price. So for what charge pipes offer, I figured the price of the even sure's was a little bit much. Two, uh, potentially too much carbon fiber. So I already have the intake, the brace, the intercooler cover, maybe the engine cover. I'm not sure what I'm doing with that yet, but kind of thought that the the charge pipes being carbon fiber could have been a little bit overkill and doing something like polished I think kind of gives an opportunity for something a little different in the engine bay. And three, no J pipe. So as of right now they are, they do have one in development but I didn't want to do these installs at two different times or potentially go with two different manufacturers, meaning even Shuri on the charge pipes and then somebody else for the J pipe. Didn't really have to do the J pipe but I did want to do them all at once. Another one was SSR. So originally I was looking at the SSR for an intake option uh, which I would have gone with that and the matching charge pipes powder coated in Yas Marina Blue, but since I didn't go with the intakes, I wasn't going to go with the charge pipes, and again, no J pipe. Now the previous owner of the Nardo put these gloss black BMS charge pipes in here, and actually I think they look great. Um, I still think that the polished ones were the way to go for the Yas Marina, but, and you know what, even if he'd have gone with the even Shuri carbon fiber charge pipes, maybe it wouldn't have been too much. Um, you know, again, we already have the, you know, the engine cover, the intercooler cover and all the other components so it probably would have been okay but I still think that that bit of chrome that that polished look when you open up the engine bay I think that's going to stand out I think it's going to look good so this is the evolution raceworks charge pipes and j pipe set if you have AWE intakes or if you plan to get them you have to note that at checkout when buying these charge pipes because this set deals with the fitment issues with the passenger side airbox and there is a slight cost increase in that I think it was like $40 I got this set from Extreme Powerhouse, and actually I got these before I got my intakes, but I knew I was gonna get the AWE, and they were having a sale on these at the time. So my wife was always harping on me about fiscal responsibility, and I feel like it would have been fiscally irresponsible not to take advantage of a sale on a car part that I was probably gonna need at some point in the future. So, doing my part. You're welcome, hon. All right, enough of the intro, let's get started. Okay, so for like most things that we need to do before we get to anything in the engine bay, have to move the black shrouds in the back and the brace. So for the black shrouds, first a 10 millimeter to quarter turn on those six bolts in the back. And then if you have a pry tool, that helps get the plastic uh, clasp up on the sides. Then it's a 13 mil to remove all the bolts around the brace and a 10 mil to remove the bolt of the brace attached to the coolant reservoir. For the engine cover, just pull at the corners. They're just secured by a little rubber grommet. So just a little pull at each corner will lift it straight up. Okay, so now you have to remove the driver's side air intake. It depends on whether or not you're doing charge pipes and the J pipe. If you're just doing the charge pipes, you only have to remove the passenger side. If you're doing the J pipes, you have to remove the driver's side. Okay, so to remove the old J pipe, we have to remove the intake hose. It's the same style hose that connects to the intake pipe. Um, remove the clamps and the rubber ring that connects it to the intercooler and then the plastic clip that connects it to the throttle body. Also a heads up on the other side of the, the J pipe um, towards the back, there is a little hose that runs alongside of it that is connected to the J pipe with a little metal clip. So if you push the bottom of that, the hose will come free. Uh, woo! Okay, so now that the J pipe is removed, I'm gonna take a little time out to describe how this actually worked because it was not the easiest thing to remove. So here's what you have to do. So this is our J pipe. And here's how it would be situated in the car. So if your throttle body side here, intercooler side here, the hose that comes off here, and back here, there's a little metal clasp that holds in a hose, and all it does is really just hold it in place, and you have to push down, and the hose pulls off. But this is how it's situated in the car. This is a one-time use plastic clasp that goes around the throttle body side. You can't see it, but the end of this white tab on this kind of sticks out here. So what you really have to do is kind of feel back there and if you have something like this, which is just like a very, very tiny um, little flathead, so you can kind of pry the end of this clasp up. 
Once you do, you can either get like uh, needleless pliers. You can actually just pull it with your fingers. It's kind of hard to get going, but once you start, once you start the process, you can just kind of incrementally pull, and the whole thing will eventually come out. So once this comes out. This essentially is free, and then that frees this side up from the throttle body side. So this end goes to the inner cooler. And again, we're still situated the J5 like this. So this is connected to the inner cooler with like a rubber ring. There's a replacement one that comes with the Evolution Racework set, probably any other set that you get. But that rubber ring is really, really tight. So in order to get underneath of that, I use one of these tools that came with my pry tool kit. Kind of you can slide that up under the rubber and sort of loosen that seal. Once you do, you still have to you know, it's a lot of effort to kind of wiggle it back and forth in order to start to loosen it, um, but that kind of does help get the process going. So once you've removed this, it's really just a matter of pulling down and away from the throttle body to disconnect the J-pipe. Same with this. Once you've kind of loosened the seal of the rubber ring, you just pull straight down, and then you kind of have to twist a little bit to kind of finagle it out of place, but make sure you've disconnected that hose from this side, um, only because it'll be the last thing that's holding it in place once you remove it. Also, and as they note the instructions, uh, the O-ring that is inside the factory J-pipe, you wanna remove that and hold on to it because you're gonna need this for the new. Okay, so for the installation of the new J-pipe. So the two things is one, the C-clamp that goes on the throttle body side and the O-ring that we took out of the old one that goes in the new one. So the O-ring will actually get situated right in this first groove on the throttle body side of the new J-pipe. And so for the C-clamp, so you have it situated like this. Again, this is how it's gonna go in the car. This, and you have the two prongs pointing up on the ends, and it's gonna sit like this. So now that we're ready to install the J-pipe, first I had the rubber coupler with a little bit of silicone paste on the inside. Get that seated onto the intercooler. Next, take the J-pipe, get that seated into the throttle body, and then top side into the rubber coupler that's connected to the intercooler. Might need to lift the intercooler up just a little bit to get it in place, but once that is seated, then we can get the C-clamp into the throttle body side, and then finally the clamps onto the rubber coupler. Okay, so this is the installed J-pipe. So now for the throttle body side, the first time I actually went to go seat this on, um, I felt like it maybe wasn't all the way, and, and sure enough, after I loosened and, and pushed a little more, it did go a little further in. So if you can see a little bit of the polished side of the throttle body from removing the old one, you have a little bit more room and it needs to be seated further. For the intercooler side, now they tell you to put the uh, rubber coupler on the intercooler first and then slide this up underneath. That is a little bit tricky. Lifting the intercooler up does help kind of get that seated. So if you have another set of hands, if you have someone that can help you out, while one person sort of pulls on the J-pipe, simultaneously pushes on the intercooler, and the other person tightens the clamps, that does make things a little bit easier. Not necessary, but it is helpful. And then finally, lastly, this hose here, just push, once you hear the click, it is in place. Okay, so now that the J-pipe is done, gonna start on the charge pipe side. So just have to remove this intake. So T20 Torx bits, remove the mass airflow sensor, and then a six mil to undo the clamp so we can get this up and out. Okay, removing the old charge pipes. So six mil to undo the clamps to the intercooler and then an E10 or an eight mil socket if you don't have an E10 to remove the bolt connecting the charge pipes to the turbos. Also a good idea to put a little towel or something like that in the turbo outlet so nothing falls in. All right, so installing the new charge pipe. So just like with the J-pipe, we reuse the O-ring from the factory one. A little bit of silicone paste in here, get this in place. And we'll kind of twist this down and get it situated near or kind of like right on top of the turbo outlet. Get the rubber coupler on here, then get this installed to the coupler side and then situate this on the turbo outlet and then put the bolt back on. Also, it's really helpful to remove this intake pipe that sits between the charge pipes. So you can just take a 10 mil socket to undo that one bolt and then it just pulls straight up. All right, so now that the rear charge pipe is set up, clamped down, everything is good to go. Did the front charge pipe, got that situated and then put the intake tube back on so I can get the intake boxes back in. And once that's in, gonna reassemble the coolant tank on the driver's side, get the driver's side air box back in, get everything tightened up, put the engine cover, brace, and the plastic shrouds in the back back on, and we are good to go. Usually I go through the tools in the beginning of the video, but this time, saving it for the end because I thought I would just go through what each one was used for. So, the bolt that connects the charge pipes to the turbo requires an E10. Now, problem is, is that for me, this one was too big. So I could not get this uh, properly seated on the bolt given the size or the diameter of the pipe. So instead of this, I ended up going with 
um, an eight mil. So an eight mil socket I used to loosen the bolt. And then for putting it back in, I just hand tightened until it was as far as it could go. And by the way, even when you think you've hand tightened it as far as it can go, you, if, you, if it's not perfectly sealed, I just wiggled the charge pipes back and forth until I could you know, tighten a little more. And I just kept doing that over and over again until it looked like it was 99% of the way there. At which point I used the closed end of an eight mil socket to pretty much get about a quarter turn. And that was about it. So the 13 mil socket in order for removing the brace, the T-clamps they provide for the J-pipe uses an 11 mil, uh, 10 mil socket. So this is for the brace that connects to the coolant tank, as well as the intake pipe that sits between the charge pipes. Seven mil socket for the clamps that they provide uh, for the charge pipe side to the intercooler. One of their clamps actually gave out on me, so I ended up using the factory ones. And with those and pretty much all factory clamps in the engine bay, you can use a six mil socket. Next, I have a T20, and this is for the mass airflow sensors, and a T30 to remove uh, the bolt that connects the coolant tank to the frame. Okay, pry tool kit. I've mentioned this in a couple of videos. Really, really handy set, link in the description below. Uh, so this to remove the plastic clasp in order to get the shrouds, the plastic shrouds in the back up. And then this, also part of the pry tool kit, this I actually used in order to loosen up the seal of the rubber or silicone, I'm not sure what the material is, um, rings around the intercooler side of the charge pipes and the J-pipe. Needle nose pliers. So again, in the instructions, they provide a way to loosen the J-pipe from the throttle body side. I could not do it. So instead, um, and because it is a one-time use um, clamp that connects the J-pipe to the throttle body. I just used this to start pulling and then you can pull it all the way or just use your hand at some point. Um, and once that comes all the way out, then the J-pipe just slides straight down. Silicone paste. So I use this for the factory O-rings, putting them into the new charge pipes and J-pipe. Then a little bit of cleaning stuff. So I have the VRP cleaner from Chemical Guys because the, uh, the silicon rings, I used to shine them up a little bit. And then some light metal polish for the actual charge pipes just to make them a little bit shinier. Okay, so now that the installation is done, I thought I would just go over a couple of things that I thought you know, might be noteworthy and helpful to somebody else doing this same job. For one, on the J-Pipe side. So as I mentioned with the tools, they you know, provide a way to remove that J-Pipe that I just could not understand, couldn't figure out how to get it out. Um, again, what ended up happening was that little white piece that sticks out, if you just grab onto that with some needleless pliers and yank that thing all the way out, J-pipe just slides straight off the throttle body and that was really useful in getting that done. Next, the intake uh, in between the charge pipes. So they have you remove the clamp here to remove this piece, but if you just go one step further and take a 10 mil and to remove the bolt in between the charge pipes and yank this entire thing up, it makes getting to the E10 on the rear charge pipe so much easier. So I highly recommend doing that. It's very easy to get back in place. Speaking of the E10 that connects to the rear charge pipe. So, um, you know, for that, they have you sort of hand tighten it most of the way and then make sure it is sealed and then do the last bit with the tool. Um, I could not use my E10 um, socket just because of the way that it was, but using an eight mil closed side wrench was just fine. However, I was super paranoid about that given the fact that if you screw it up, you might potentially mess up your entire turbo flange, which I really didn't want to do. So I redid this a few times just to make extra sure it was correct. And ultimately, even though after hand tightening it, again, 99% of the way there and maybe getting a quarter turn out of an eight mil closed end of a, of a wrench, it still felt like there was just this tiniest bit of wiggle room. Um, that might just be my paranoia. Um, or maybe that's just the way that it is. And again, I tried over and over again just to make sure I was doing it completely right. And I got the same results on this side. So I think that's the way that it's supposed to be. And I think the last thing would probably be the engine cover fitment. And I'm glad that they included in the instructions uh, about what to do in the event that it does not fit. Because when I initially went to go put my engine cover back on, sure enough, it did not fit. So um, to fix this, all I really had to do was loosen up the charge pipe side of this clamp um, to the intercooler and then loosen this up and then sort of just, I, I pulled this out maybe just like a fraction of an inch and then pushed the entire pipe back, like leaned on it while I retightened this. And then once I did that, the engine cover fit on perfectly. So just a very minor, um, you know, sort of fitment issue initially, but they do say in the instructions that there is a tiny bit of wiggle room with both pipes in the event that you have a problem with the engine cover fitment, and that certainly was the case. So again, I think the instructions were pretty good. There were just a couple of things that I was a little unsure about, but, um, you know, not too bad. And as terms of difficulty, you know, I think that, like they think they rated the 
J-Pipe install a two and the charge pipe install a three. Overall, I mean, that's probably accurate. Again, the entire job really is not that difficult considering what you're doing. I mean, you're just undoing clamps and bolts and moving a couple of parts around and putting everything back in place. The J-Pipe was actually really easy. It was just the removing of it was insanely difficult. So if you have an issue with that, I don't blame you. As for how they look, and to no one's surprise, I think they look fantastic. I think when you open up the hood and you have that little pop of chrome in the back, just looks cool. Um, you know, like I said about the Nardo ones, I think the gloss black ones look cool. I think that the um, carbon fiber, even though I thought it might have been a little overkill in this engine bay, um, they they can look great. But for me, the chrome ones were the way to go, especially when the sun hits it. Like right now, and you kind of have that little bit of sun glare on it, and it just it just like lights up. I think that looks awesome. All right, guys. Well, another mod down. So hope you found this video helpful. Give it a like if you did, and subscribe if you haven't already. I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching.